So nearly lost the crack today. Very little crack. Very little. Sure you've been here all day. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've had plenty of crack about no, the day. We have a... We've had a vocal sound separation day with a, with a mobile separator. Right, uh, uh, and you're selling these things? Aye, so we're the main distri distributor for vocal sound for their separators to anything agricultural based, really. So, so maybe a farmer with an AD plant or a farm. Okay. The AD only side is looked after by somebody else, but well, by them direct. The business that you're, is it you're running or? Well, I would do most of the runnings on it, but okay. Dara Rutledge is part of it as well. Okay. Clo uh, Clover Agri Sales. Yeah. So what all these do then? Mainly, mainly slurry stuff at this stage. Well, that's really where we started the business. I've sort of been involved in slurry things for the last, say, eight years, really. Uh, well, it's been tankers or umbilical. I, I spread a fair bit of slurry on my time, so what was the point in going and doing something, sell something differently? Yeah. May as well sell something that I half known about <laughs> it, you know. We sell Murr Brothers engineering, dribble bars, trail and shoes. We sell snap tight hose from Waxford. We uh, sell Mitchell engineering, slurry tankers, trailers, bits and pieces I got off him, trail and shoes off him as well if customers want them. We sell Vogel sign trail and shoes as well. Um, deal with Graham Warden Engineering from Newton Arge. So sell a few buck racks of his buckets. Uh, what else have I sold with Graham's? Pallet for big, big high capacity buckets for loading shovels. Stuff I got. Bit of everything then. Bit of everything. Flow yeah. meters for slurry stuff. I sold uh, a couple of Muldoon chassis with Mitchell tankers on them so stuff I got or bespoke stuff like that I'm sort of interested in as well so if I can get it for the customer I'll sell it but just sort of growing a portfolio at the minute. So how did Clover come about then? Clover I've always done I used to work for it uh, years ago mm -hmm. full time and then whenever I went into sales worked for a couple of different companies and and I was thinking, I've always thought about maybe doing something myself, and then he had actually said to me about it as well, we should do something, and it probably just started to develop from there. So, yeah, we're operating out of his yard there in Balneary, okay. just above Moira, and so it's like I can come in some days and do stuff with machinery, and then... If you're not busy? If I'm not, aye, well, if I'm not busy with sales stuff, or I can, you know, it's easy to work everything around each other whenever it's in the same place. So, sold a couple of those compactors as well for for silage. Uh, it's, they seem to be going well for me. They seem to be becoming a big thing now. Taking off a wee bit. It's but sure, there's, there's people that are online that say they're a waste of time. Anybody that I've had one at, or spoken to about them, or has used them, none of them can say anything bad about them, so. I seem to be kind of need it at this point with the rate the grass is coming in, like. Well, that's it. Sure, if you have 200 ton an hour coming in, let's be generous, 20 ton loading shovels, not enough. Yeah. But, sure, we're all doing it with less too, you know. I can see it becoming a bit more of a thing, really, mm. once boys start talking about how good how they good can they be. Are. Yeah, well, that's it. I have, customer, I have a couple of customers bought them to hire them out, so you know they they have a customer base that will see what it's like, and if it's good, they might end up buying one, they might not, they might just keep hiring it, and I don't mind, that That suits me well too. Like. So how do you think the open day has gone today? Surprising, it was hard to judge how many people would come, but uh, because the weather's been fairly decent this last two days, so people have been at silage, but I thought there was a great turnout, and the targeted customers that we had, uh, that were potential buyers, were here, so that you know that's really what it was for, and anybody else is a bonus. Yeah. So David, we've come towards the end of the Clover Agri oh, Vulgus Sang Severation demo day. How has uh, the feedback been for you? So Craig, the, the, the feedback is very good. It has been a very rewarding day. Um, it's great to see so many stakeholders and farmers alike recognise the challenges that there is around water quality and the issues that there is around that on, on the island of Ireland. So there's been a few machines scattered about the yard. This is one of them beside you. 
Yeah, sure. And we had the, do you want to walk us through what this here is? Yeah, so what we have seen uh, on the demo here all day today is our X-Split, our Vogelsang X-Split mobile separator trailer. It has all the pumps and auxiliary equipment needed for a full separation process. So as part of that um, setup, you would have what you would call a feed pump, which feeds the slurry into what we call an inlet macerator. The inlet macerator then macerates the fibers in the slurry, while also catching the heavy um, foreign objects that may be in slurry. And it acts then as a kind of a, a safety mechanism for the whole system, so that you don't have any potential for damage throughout it. So once it, go, it comes through the inlet macerator via the suction pump, it then travels up to the separator, which is our X-split, and it um, separates the fibers from the slurry, resulting that you have a, a liquid fraction, which is a separated liquid that contains two millimeter fibers in size. And then you have a, a dry solid fraction, which can be an up to 40% dry matter content the separated liquid goes into a preferably clean tank and then the dry matter can be stored in a dung heap where it can be then top dressed out via a rear discharge spreader. So with the separating there's plenty of different reasons of why you'd want to use one? There are, so from our experience Craig of, of separation so far, there are two different types of farmers that are interested in separation. Uh, you have those that are, uh, that are interested in it from a physical storage capacity point of view and then you have those that are interested in it from a grassland management point of view whereby they want to take the fibres out of the slurry because of reducing the risk of contamination of the leaf sward which essentially can you know once you take that fibre out you don't have contamination you have a cleaner leaf sward you're not bringing any um, debris back in in your silage clamps and you're reducing the risk then of you know bacterial infection and myotoxin built up in silage clamps. So you're reducing that risk and generally benefiting the overall herd health of your, your cows and sheds. That particular mobile trailer that was there today can be, be for both farmers and contractors alike. Um, that trailer there is a full system that has all the pumps and auxiliary equipment that you would need. Um, and you know different separation systems can be farm specific whereby you know one farm might only have a small separation requirement whereas they would only need a pump a separator an inlet macerator that they can mount permanently in a fixed location on the frame others might have a situation where there could, could be two or three holdings and they're fragmented and they would have a, a mobile trailer set up where you can separate then into each different blocks. From a contractor perspective, you can use that type of a trailer that we've just seen there today, but there's also the option of mounting a, a tractor drawn trailer or even a, a lorry drawn trailer, pull trailer, whereby you can have three or four units on a trailer and go in in a very big commercial contracting way where you can be separating up to 200 cubes an hour. As a, as a farmer's point of view, when it, like paying a contractor to come out and do that kind of job, it could save you a lot of money, especially if you were tight for slurry storage. Exactly, look, I think we all recognise on the island of Ireland there's a, there's a big issue around storage capacity. You know, our weather patterns are changing to the extent that, you know, the, the windows for getting spreading slurry are getting shorter. I think it's fair to say that all our stakeholder bodies, our departmental bodies are looking for us now not to spread slurry if at all possible until at least the middle of February or towards the end of it for when the grass is growing and there's um, less chance of leaching into, into, uh, of nitrates into waterways. So, you know, physical storage requirement for longer is required. By having this separation process here and by using our compact X-Split separator, you're creating a physical storage or an extra physical storage of approximately 20%. So, like, that's a huge saving and, you know, in our own, as we do say, it's cheaper than concrete. And the contractor as well, whenever he's spreading the story, he'll have a bit of a he'll have it a lot easier than he would if it was nice thick stuff like. A lot easier. I think, look, uh, slurry tanks differ uh, uh, from farm to farm level. I think we'll all agree with that. Um, especially, you know, whether it be on dairy farms or beef farms, all, uh, there's all different types of slurry. The very mere fact that you're not having any fibre or foreign objects inside in the, in the slurry 
leads to you know far easier on the machines themselves you're getting an awful lot longer out of the wearing parts inside in your macerators and as well it's actually quicker to spread that slurry. I wonder would you be saving much diesel too in the Dorda pump? Absolutely well? yeah, yeah of course you see yeah absolutely there's, 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 there's a huge saving there across the line you know plus as well when you are spreading a separated liquid the slurry from the start to the end is very uniform because it's 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 mixed already as in it's a it's, it's a liquid that you've no big reason for solids to be dropping to the bottom it, it, it's a full liquid and that means then that you're getting a lovely uniform spread of an even application of nutrients to the plant so your your slurry management in general is a lot better so could you see many of these uh, mobile separators becoming about the place or what do you think I certainly think there's a market. I think farmers will maybe say, oh, I must spend that sort of money. But the way the way slurry is in this country on uh, soil indexes and stuff, we're going to have to do something because the, the country is too overstocked, really. Yeah. And for farmers to combat that, they'll have to do something or else probably reduce stock. Not that that's the only benefit. You know, it's far nicer to spread because it's so, you know, there's no... Uh, fibres or limit, limited amount of fibres in it and then everybody gives off sure about the you know about the lines of the dribble bar and stuff so you shouldn't have that to the same extent anyway or you hopefully shouldn't have it. I could see a grant would fairly help it out. But sure a grant helped out the dribble bar and trail and shoe thing. Yeah, sure I'm sure am. nobody hardly still you know a lot of farmers don't use it at all. I feel like it's maybe something that people aren't thinking about now but come a year or two's time, it'll be... Oh, it's certainly something for people to start thinking about. Yeah. You know, slurry storage, you'll, you'll, depending on your slurry, you'll probably reduce your storage by 15%, worst case, and potentially more. So it's not, it's not cheap to put up a slurry store or an underground tank. Look, there's some science in it, and I don't know all the figures, and... You're no scientist. Who knows whether the figures are over exaggerated but your nitrogen content per thousand litre or thousand gallons of slurry should be higher and your P and K levels should be lower. It's really silly you should be saving fertilizer as well then. Per thousand you, yeah you should you should either if you apply the same amount you should have more nitrogen in it but mm -hmm. if you apply less you know you should have to apply less to get the same amount as before. You take the spread and ability of it and fit the spread of it a bigger window, you don't have those lines or ash content in your silage. Some people do chat about green bedding, you know, things like that. So those are the benefits of the whole thing. It was good to have people there, had people there that have seen it at an AD plant, mm -hmm. but wanted to see it in a dairy farm situation. So, but sure, slurry is as big a game nearly now as, as grass is, right? Whenever you take contractors yeah. and things, so it sort of has to be like. Like it's a massive part, like if it weren't for slurry, a lot of contractors wouldn't have a lot of work to do. Like. I wouldn't do anything. Yeah. So from a, a fellow that spread a bit of slurry now and again, like do you notice a lot of difference? In what? Like ease of using the slurry that's from the separator or... Well there's nothing more annoying than going somewhere and can't get like flow. And mm -hmm. we're okay, we're only 400 metres out here and he's at 750 RPM and I'm doing the 39,000 and I'm uphill. Look, you might get 34 and you might be raving a bit harder with the other stuff, so you probably should save diesel and yeah. all too, but then, yes, you still have a running cost to the separator. I it's run off electricity though, the separator, isn't it? Aye, so it's run off three phase. Right. The systems we have are all three phase electrical. So for example, this machine here is a, the, is a low cost, low maintenance machine. Yeah, to get you see to get the to get the full benefit and to maximise the benefit of a separation process, ideally what you would want is to be separating from one tank, as we've seen the mobile tra trailer system working with, and then that separated liquid then goes into a clean tank, because if you separate into the same tank that you're pulling from, it takes you twice as long to try and get the fibre out. Plus, you still have a lot of fibre in the tank, so from a spreading point of view for your grazing platforms and your silage block platforms, you're not getting that benefit of what you would if you were, let's say, separating into a clean tank. The, separ the separated fibres, if dry enough, they can actually be used for green bedding, isn't it? 
Surely, yes. So this particular machine, the feedback we're getting from our customers that have, that have these units fitted is the dry matter content is really good. We are able to get the dry matter content in this particular unit up to 40% dry matter. So some people will use it straight off for bedding, let's say, in, a, in an open shed. Others will put it through maybe a second stage fan process to break it down even further. And that will allow them then, depending on what, you know, depending on the, 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 the regulations in individual countries, some people then will spread that directly onto the cubicles for cows. As we all know, the, way, the price of straw is probably going to be this year. It's, it's, it's going to be in short supply and very yeah. expensive. So, yeah, definitely green bedding is an option. Along with a host of other different options as well, we have people from the horticulture industry that are looking at options for, you know, mixing it with horticultural products for, for let's say, for potting compost. And then you have other people then that will actually, you know, make slurry pellets of it for, for a horticulture. And it's not just separators that you do. There's, you just kind of do the full range of slurry stuff, don't you? Yeah, look, you know, we're, um, Vogelzang is a company that's in existence since 1929. It's a third generation family owned business. They have subsidiaries in 25 locations around the world, um, one of them being in Ireland. And, um, you know, we were the first company ever to invent and manufacture both a slurry tanker, a uh, dribble bar and a macerator. So we're primarily a pumps company where we have um, a whole different um, section of businesses. You know, wastewater is one, industry is another, biogas is another, transport and then agriculture. We will be um, a supplier of macerators to several different OEMs around the country. And we also manufacture dribble bar and trail and shoe booms from six meters in size right up to 36 meters. So they're for both tanker mounted and um, umbilical systems as well. On the, on the crossland tankers that we actually visited recently, it's Vogelsang. It's Vogelsang, yeah. That's, yeah. that's one of our VX lobe style pumps. We, we also do a screw and stator type pump for tankers as well. So, you know, they come in 4,250 litre and 6,000 litre pumps. So our 6,000 litre pump typically would fill a three and a half thousand gallon tanker in about three and a half minutes. Well, David, thanks for running us through all this. And Thank you very much, Craig. It was lovely to have you here. Hope the open day went well for you. Thank you very much.